Okay. So, welcome, welcome. What day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. What time is it? I. No, it's 4.30 in my kit. <laughs> um, and today, what are you making, Dot? I don't know. You don't know? Is it a surprise one today? Uh -huh. Are we doing a surprise one? Sorry, I'm just jumping to let somebody else in. So, today, we are making mini frittatas, okay? And I hope that everybody's got most of their ingredients ready as per the recipe, but don't worry if you haven't, no, no big deal. And this time, I hope it helps a little bit. I have a bit of feedback that actually, it would be really nice to have the whole recipe before the class. So I threw that at you um, during the week. So I hope that was helpful, um, but don't worry, we're gonna walk through it. So if you haven't printed it off or anything, don't worry at all. And if anybody needs to ask us any questions, bash your space bar, holler in, Put a question in the chat um, and we'll do our best, but please make sure that you go on mute again so that we don't hear everybody's kitchen chaos. Um, I think our kitchen chaos is probably quite enough for everyone, eh? <laughs> especially, when, especially when Stan gets talking. Right, so we're making frittatas, but we're doing um, a couple of different ways. So if you don't like prosciutto or you don't want to use salami or anything, that's absolutely fine. You can make these vegetarian. And don't worry if you haven't got the exact vegetables either. So we're doing a sort of green goddess variety, but you can do, um, what have we got today, Dot? What did we find? And broad beans. Uh -huh. And cheese. And spinach we've got as well, which we've just blanched. So I've just put that in some um, boiling water. We've just blanched that. And so we can um, drain that off. If you've done spinach, make sure that it's not too wet because um, it'll just make your mix watery. Um, Dorothy, have you abandoned your audience already? She's worse than her mother. She's gone off for a coffee. <laughs> All right, we're just going to let that go for a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is Dorothy's worst thing ever. Cracking the eggs. Okay, so we've got to crack six eggs, and I can recommend that you do that. Ideally, this is the perfect bowl. We've got a bowl that's got a lip on it, which will help us to pour it into the muffin moulds. If you haven't got a muffin tin, um, don't panic as well. I also wrote that you can do this as one giant one as well. Um, and you can use a cake tin, uh, and line it with parchment paper. You could use a loaf tin even and make a kind of loaf cake style. What's going on here? Oh, don't worry. Mrs. Pedantic. Um, but so you could use anything you like, really, any shape. The, the only thing to be mindful of though is that the bigger the tin, if you're using a whole tin to do this, the bigger the tin, the flatter it will be. So you'll get more of a sort of puffed omelette rather than a frittata, which is a little bit higher. And these are going to souffle up. Oh, wow. Did you put the yolk in? What, Danny? You put the yolk in. Yes, whole egg. So six whole eggs. And ideally, try and get it into the bowl rather than on the counter, which is what we've got happening over here. But that's okay, because we've got an immaculately clean counter, which is wood, and all good. And there wasn't any shell in there, was there? No? All fine. A dot is breaking each of her eggs into a glass before she puts it into the bowl, just in case you get a duff one. There you go. One, two. Do you want me to give you a hand? Oh, you really don't like doing it, do you? Cracking eggs is a really good skill. You're gonna crack eggs the rest of your life, um, as long as you're not a vegan. I don't, you are. I don't have the ingredients, so I'm just gonna watch. That's totally fine. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, and if you want the recipe at the end, if you didn't get it, I'll send it to you, okay? So you can do it any time. So, um, cracking eggs, lots of different ways you can do it. If you crack an egg on the side of the bowl that it's gonna go into, if you get a duff egg and you've already got a couple of in, couple in there, it's a little bit trickier to remove it. 
Um, and lots of chefs that I know crack their eggs on the counter before they put it in because if you get a little bit of shell, the shell then ends up on the counter rather than in your bowl. There's another magic trick as well. You can try it at home. You've got two eggs. One hand. You've got two eggs. Smack them together. I promise you, only one of them will ever break. That one. And then you can pop it in. Right, one, two, three, four. I know these are lovely fresh eggs. Oh, I have spotted just a tiny little doodad though. And if you do, the magic trick is to use the shell of the egg that you just cracked. If there's something you want to scoop out, use the shell of the egg that you've just used to scoop it out. So it's got a lovely sharp edge and all those little bits of egg that you don't want in there actually want to go home. So they get attracted back to the shell. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna pop everybody on mute. I can hear a couple of people in the background. Last one, do you wanna do the last one, Dot? Okay. We clear up the mess then. Okay. <laughs> Who's running this show? Oh, today is it me? You feeling a bit, a bit grey today? Right, okay, yucky bit done, boring bit done, yucky boring bit done. Next up, cream. So if anyone's in the US, um, you will have got hopefully heavy cream, but don't worry too much. It's, it's a pretty robust, rather blah, robust recipe this. Um, so if you've got a lighter cream or pouring cream, that's fine. Even whipping cream will be fine. Um, but we got Longman's um, double cream. Yeah, it's delicious cream. But look, I don't know if you can see this. How thick that is. That's like, I am pouring it in. It's supposed to be pouring in. Just, but look at this, wait for this. <laughs> If you're in the US, that is something you don't often see. <laughs> Great big lump of cream. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we're going to need a fork. Fork, please. To whisk it up together. So you're going to make sure that you break up all of the yes. yolk into the white. Really, really well. You want a lovely, smooth consistency where you can't see the different colours of the white and the yellow and the orange um, anymore. It's all going to be one smooth, lovely, cream yellow colour. If you haven't already, go and pop your ovens on to 200 degrees Celsius. Or your um, we went to somewhere amazing um, nearby that uh, parlor, and he has got the most incredible flat of charcuterie. I'm going to show you if anyone's remotely local, I can highly recommend it. Check that out, we've already eaten about half of it. <laughs> but so, we're going to do a mix of, of we've got some brazala. Some big slices of. Oh, it's not Brazala? Yeah. Oh. It doesn't look like Brazala. Yeah, well, she'd know, right? Um, Brazala doesn't have much fat in it. No, you're, well, you're right. It doesn't have much fat in it. So, should we cut down the side and see what we've got? Yeah. So, we're going to have a mix. So, we might have mixed results, but we've also decided that we're not going to do all of our frittatas in prosciutto cups or salami cups. If you can see that, um, you can't really see it much, but that's all mixed in. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. looking sort of... Just point it down a little bit. Yellowy, whitey, creamy. It's looking creamy. Yeah. Um, so that's what it will look like. And it will have like some bubbles on the top. And it will be a bit frothy. 
It would also help if I was looking at it through the brown paper, by the way. That might look slightly more appetizing than that sort. <laughs> We're having a bit of a day today, aren't we? Oh dear. So there you go. There's our amazing charcuterie uh, platter in a lovely backpack bag. I don't know where he gets it from, but it's it's impressive, I gotta say. Um, so we're going to make cups for half of our frittatas with prosciutto or salami or whatever you guys have is fine. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So we're going to do them, we're going to line the moulds with paper, parchment paper instead. So if we're going to, I've got a question here saying if we're going to cook ours um, a little bit later, should we not preheat the oven now? So. Um, I would, I'd actually suggest double baking them. So preheat your oven now and bake, go ahead and bake them now and then just warm them through a little bit later if you're going to use these later. They actually freeze really well too. Um, and they're almost like twice baked souffles. But if you leave them for too long without cooking them, you might find that the prosciutto gets a little bit soggy and isn't so nice. But when you cook them a second time, take them out of the cups and put them on a flat oven tray. Um, when you when you bake them a second time. So we've got our egg and our cream in here. We probably want some seasoning, don't we? Should put a bit of salt and pepper in there. Yeah? We're almost out of salt there, aren't we? I've got Josh's um, chilli salt. That would be nice. Nah. Nah. Okay. You don't want that? No, okay. That's all right. Just add a little bit. But be mindful when you're seasoning the mix that if you're using prosciutto or salami, the prosciutto is going to be quite salty. Um, so you won't need too much anyway. What? No. Outrageous. <laughs> and then Dorothy doesn't really like pepper very much. Oh, you're happy with it now? No. Okay. okay, great. So we'll put some we'll put some pepper in. There we go, and we'll get um, we'll get the salt in, and then what we're going to do is brush the moulds with the melted butter for the ones that we're going to use prosciutto as our case. If you're not going to use prosciutto as a case, don't put butter. Cut squares of paper, which I will do with you in a moment, and line it with that. Now, anyone who came to class that we do, um, was it muffin? It was muffins, wasn't it? When lots of people couldn't get muffin cases. Shall we get the brushes to put that one? Yeah, it's there, sweetheart. You were very organised, you already got it. Um, so why don't you brush six of those? This is fun to be fun. This is quite fun. You brush six of those and I'm going to brush, I'm going to cut the paper for the other moulds, so because we've got vegetarians um, that would like to eat this. Vegetarian. Yes, but it's not just for me. We're going to be giving these to friends too, aren't we? Mm, yeah, lots of our neighbours are vegetarian. So I'm cutting squares that are quite a bit bigger than the size of the circle of my mould and I'll show you why. I've got a nice strip like that. It's probably about the ooh, splashing butter everywhere. <laughs> it's probably about the width of my hand. And if you've got a 12 piece 12 mold muffin tin, you'll need about the same size. And I'm going to cut this into three pieces. I'm just going to pop that there down so they can see a bit better. So I've made that into roughly three, three squares. I've done a really awful job of that actually. But then if you were with us on our last muffin class, you'll remember that I showed a little trick of how to do this. So if you now just push that into the mold, you, they just bounce straight out, well I'll show you. So don't, don't do any more done, you've done all six. And then these six will be the ones without prosciutto. So the ones without prosciutto, don't, you don't need to butter because this is going to be the thing that stops your, your uh, frittata from sticking. So yeah, you're desperate to do it, aren't you? Well, show them first what happens if you try to just push it in. 
and then it just bounces straight back out again. It's totally pointless. But if you scrunch it up tight, 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 <laughs> She's very delicate, this one. She gets hurt by pieces of paper. There we go. Undo them. And then push them in. We just add them to the end. There we go. So we scratch up the paper. And don't worry if it doesn't come all the way up the side. No big drama. It'll bounce off a little bit. No big deal. But that's, that's nothing to worry about because when you pour them in, it'll push it down. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Now, do you want to start adding your vegetables to your mixture? Yes. Get your peas or whatever you have and pour them into your mixture. Raining peas! <laughs> yes, lots of people. Raining peas. Yeah. Well, we did have a bit of a cloudy with meatballs this moment a few weeks ago, didn't we? <laughs> um, some cheese. Yeah, so we've got 200 grams of cheese, which is pretty much two cups of cheese if you're using cup measurements and grating it. Um, two cups of grated cheese. What different cheeses did we have? Um, we used cheddar and something else. Yeah, uh, cheddar and something else. Your peas or whatever else you have, your beans, your whatever. Well, are you going to pop those? Are you going to put them in a hole? Okay. Half and half. So we've got broad beans, gorgeous broad beans. What's this pudding on me? Ah, do you remember doing this before? Where you, you have to take the skin off. Yeah, it's called double pudding. The bane of every chef's life. Do you ever go to a fancy restaurant and they give you a broad bean in anything that still looks like that? Don't go back. <laughs> Very naughty, it's lazy. The outside shell, and it's also why most people don't like broad beans or fava beans as they are originally called. Most people don't like them because this outer shell here is really bitter, um, but the inside there is absolutely delicious, sweet and gorgeous, and they look so pretty through the mixture. Um, but if you do half and half, that's totally fine. If you've got really tiny baby ones, you don't need to. But we've got some tiny baby ones, don't we? Yeah, so if you put the really tiny baby ones in, but the big ones, sit in front of the telly, listen to a podcast, uh, a podcast or an audio book. It's very therapeutic. But anyway, you don't want to watch us doing that. So, exciting part coming up prosciutto lined muffin cases. So hopefully by now, all your muffin cases that you want to line with prosciutto have been brushed with butter. Brush them really well, you can be pretty generous. And then get your prosciutto and you're gonna line the muffin case with probably two slices of prosciutto. And it's going to stick up and out of the top of it a little bit in a similar way to the way that our paper has done that. Do you want to give it a go, Mark? And I'll pod some more peas. It's probably enough, actually, because we're going to add some spinach in there too, aren't we? How do they taste? Good. <laughs> All right, actually, I'm sure it's plenty. There's only really one and a half cups. Right. Prosciutto coming. Here we go. Whoa, look at that. And don't be scared or frightened to take a bite because it's sort of un unhelpful. 
unhelpful. Unhelpful. Oh my god, this child has to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I am not a teacher of English. This is, this is not good. She can make potatoes, chocolate cake. Can she use the word? I don't even know what you were trying to say. Help, help what? You can't help it. Oh, you can't help it. Can't help it. If you can't help trying it, tasting a little bit, don't worry, go ahead. Chef says that's fine. And don't worry if you've got sort of scraggy pieces. Prosciutto is not made in immaculate slices. It comes from an animal that is not always, um, not always built the same size. They're like us. Perfect in their imperfection. Um, and so you get all different sizes and shapes. So overlap it. Don't be afraid to overlap sometimes. And don't be, don't be afraid either. If you've got some parts that aren't perfectly covered, it'll be fine. Especially if, you're, if your muffin tin is non-stick. I think you might have to eat that bit, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you want to try it. I think this is brasali, you know. Look. Okay. Yeah. You want to try it and tell me? Too much fat in it. That's okay because the fat is where the taste is. Fat is where all the you know, any chef will tell you that fat is where the flavour is. So we're gonna line those up. And then if there are any dads around, could shoo they away. shoo them away? Secret. I can see a dad. I can see a dad in New York. Go away, please leave the room. We have secret stuff to discuss. I still see you. Go, 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 go. I'm chaperoning. I'm the executive chef. Uh, you can leave them for one minute, okay? Just one minute, all the dads out. We're not gonna be dealing with any kind of heat or knives or, well, maybe we will just for a giggle to freak them out, but no. Okay, are all the dads out of the way? Thumbs up. No dads in the rooms? Amazing. Okay, next week we're going to make something as a Father's Day present for the dads. If you've got one, if you don't have a dad around and you know somebody else who's got a fantastic dad, or your mother, anyone you like, but next week we're going to make gifts for Father's Day because next week here on the 22nd, I think it is, it's going to be Father's Day over here, not necessarily in the States, but here. Oh, it's in the States too. Amazing. Okay. So, you can tell them to come back in a minute, but right now I'm going to tell you that you need to get on a case because you've got a couple of little things that you need to get a hold of. One of them is a bottle like this. Any old dress, salad dressing bottle, um, or if you find one in a store, a pretty bottle that you like the look of, grab it, okay? And don't worry if it's not this big, maybe get two smaller ones. You could give one to a grandparent, maybe, or one to a neighbor or a friend. Um, or give it to your dad, so that they could give it to their dad. Well, that's a nice idea, give it to their dad. Nice. Um, so you need a bottle, and we're gonna make homemade barbecue sauce. Daddy's barbecue sauce, okay? And then also, I need you to get a hold of a jar. Doesn't have to be a fancy jar, but a standard, but like a pint jar like this would be perfect. And we're gonna make two things next week that you can give as gifts. One's gonna be barbecue sauce, homemade barbecue sauce, and the other is gonna be what we call bread and butter pickles. Um, we're gonna make quick ones, refrigerator bread and butter pickles. You try saying that quickly. <laughs> Okay, so, and I'm going to send out an ingredients list at the end of today so that everybody has plenty of time to get everything because there's going to be a few ingredients there. But we're going to make a barbecue sauce and bread and butter pickles so that you can give them as gifts if you have a dad around that you want to give a present to if they deserve it. I haven't even decided if ours deserves it actually. Um, and then you've got something that you could do that on Father's Day, maybe you could do a barbecue and do burgers and serve it with your bread and butter pickles and your barbecue sauce. What do you think? They've gone very quiet. They've all frozen. Yay, lots of thumbs up. <laughs> Good idea? 
Love it. Okay, secret part over. You can get the dads to come in now. Secret safe with me. I'm not telling anybody. Okay. My dad just left <laughs> to go somewhere. Back, back to it. So we've got some funky Wi-Fi issues going on. I'm seeing some freezing every now and then. So just holler if you want me to say something a second time if you missed it. So now we've got, do you see guys? We've now got our paper line, half of them are paper lined and half of them are salami. Are salami lined or, or prosciutto, prosciutto or prosciutto, whatever you have. Okay. We've got salami and prosciutto and brazzola. Mm -hmm. We got all the good things. They look pretty good. Do you know, I think I might just add a little bit so they really come up and over the sides, sweetheart. Well, that's not gonna work, is it? It's not even coming up. There we go. Yeah, don't worry if it really spills up and over the side. That's it looks better. Yeah. All good. Yeah, it will look better actually. You're right. More right. You are always right. That's true. Except for when she's wrong, and I'm right. Here we go. One more piece, I think. Right. Now Hello. you're... Hello. Sorry, lovely, I missed that. We have uh, dill and... Now, Sarah, are we supposed to use that now? Yes. So if you've got herbs, you can finely chop them and add them in. Dorothy decided just before class that she really did not want any herbs in her. In her mixture. Weird they taste weird. I don't even know where she gets that from. Dill and peas is the most delicious combination. So if you've done peas in yours, definitely pop some dill in there. If you've got chives, do that. Um, basil would be delicious too. Parsley, anything you like. So you can finely chop those now and stir them through the mixture. So Doc, do you want to stir the mix up? Oh my goodness, look at all these lovely bits and pieces that we're going to have. Yeah. It might get a bit tough because of all the cheese. Yes, it's going to feel like quite a thick mixture. Don't worry. Stir it up, really get in there and make sure that all your vegetables are stirred. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of green veg, so we've got spinach. Yeah. What I do is put just a little bit of the spinach in the bottom of some of my veggie cups instead of stirring it through the mixture. Another really fun thing to do with this, guys, if you um, are making them again. <gasps> I just had the most amazing idea for the next class, or if you haven't already done the paper. Uh-huh. Um, you could get some kale leaves. Oh and, my goodness. Um, instead of using salami, you can put them, you could like scrunch them up and put them into the pots. Like crispy kale cups. Oh my goodness, I wonder if that would work. We could try it. We could try it. We but not try now. It. Not now. I think, I think it's a bit of a <laughs> Here we go. So our oven now should be, yep, it's come up to temperature. Try not to pour it everywhere now. <laughs> Floor frittata, not so delicious. <laughs> it's fine, you're doing great. Okay, you haven't made this one before, have you? You didn't test this one. I tested this one this week. You didn't test it. You've been very busy this well, week. Well, actually, you tested that one. That's absolutely true. That is absolutely true. The other ones we've made before. So, yeah, so our mix is kind of sloppy, but sloppy and lumpy. Really attractive. Um, but I promise you, it's going to be delicious. So, hopefully, by now you've got all the good things in there. And then, what we're going to do is evenly distribute them among the, the 12 cups. There is a trick to doing this. If you start pouring at one end, you might get two thirds of the way over and realize you've used up all the mixture. Um, so don't do that. Take a spoon and you're gonna put one spoonful into each cup and then you're gonna go and distribute the rest. 
Let's spin, yes, we are. Oh, fancy. Yes, could also do this with an ice cream scoop if you wanted to. It's true. Well, you might find it tricky actually because it's quite wet. And the other thing that I would say is dig deep. So go to the bottom for your first spoonful so that your first spoonful of mix is really pretty thick and that actually it's the lighter, wetter mix that you're going to be pouring on at the end once you've done a good big spoonful into the bottom. It's also an easier way to make sure that you don't end up pouring mix everywhere when you pour it out. Where you had it over there, you good. Um, don't worry if you get the odd drip, yeah, like I've just done. But also if you do it with a spoon, it gives you a little bit more control over filling your your sort of cup moulds. Um, obviously, if you're doing this in a cake tin, don't worry about doing it like this. Just go ahead and pour it all in. Alrighty. Oh, nice. What you should have are muffin moulds at this point that are about halfway full once you've done a good big spoonful into each one. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, and now we go round two. You want them to come, you might have a little bit of extra mixture. If you do, don't panic, get out a frying pan and make yourself a lovely little chef's extra. How long do you put the, them in for? You're going to put them in for about 15 minutes. So set your timer for 15 minutes and then check them. But what I would also say is after about seven or eight minutes, go and have a look. And sometimes if your oven is cooking a little bit hotter on one side than the other, open the door and turn them around or get a grown up to do that if you're not confident doing that. Is that helpful? Cool. Right. Good yes, it's a good question. Very good question. Yeah, so the other day I made these and they only needed 12 minutes, I think. But what you do is take them out when they are puffed up and golden. You should, you should never say I think because they made me doubt people. Oh, that's a good point. Well, I hate to bridge it to you, kid. I don't know everything. Yeah, but you did make them yesterday. Well, it's true. And yesterday they did take they they did take only twelve minutes. Um, oh. And but everybody's oven is different, right? So I've pretty much evenly filled all of these now. I'm not going to have any extra. Maybe a spoonful. Maybe we got a bit overexcited with the with the peas. That was quite a generous pea helping, wasn't it? And so you're going to pop them in the oven. Peas are good for you. For 12, 12 to 15 minutes. They are one of your five today. Five today? Five, five a day. day. <laughs> they definitely are one of your five a day. So we're going to pop them in the oven and they're going to come out lovely and puffed up and golden. And you know that they're done because, again, don't do this if you're not confident, but you should be able to press them in the middle on the top with a finger and they'll bounce back and they'll be gorgeous and puffed up and golden. So we're going to pop them in now. How easy was that? Mm -hmm. Super easy. Super, super easy. Done. Done. That's it. Easiest class ever, right? So yes. now while they're in, perfect amount of time to go run off and make a salad. And you've got dinner. Woohoo! I just need to set a timer. He set a timer, yeah. Go and tell Alexa 12 minutes. Alexa. So, time for 12 minutes. so remember to gather up all your things for next week. I will send out a list of ingredients that we need tonight, um, or in the next 24 hours. I will send out a list of all the ingredients. Stan wants to say bye-bye. Stan wants to say bye-bye? Okay, good grab him. Breaking every health and safety rule in the land. You can pick him up and show him off. Please don't judge. I had to groom him the other day. It took about two hours. He looks like a convict. 
Can you take Camilla's plane? You can then bring him in straight into the chair. You can't see that. You go. <laughs> you have to lift him up, sweetheart, so they can't see him. So go get your ingredients in your kit for next week and let me know if you've got any problems with any of the things, trying to find any of the um, ingredients and I'll tell you what we can jiggle around with. Um, and I think that's it. And then the week after, we thought we'd do a bit of a Greek affair. We think we're going to do, um, how do people feel about chicken skewers marinated in Greek yogurt and lemon and garlic? And then the grown-ups can put them on the barbecue and make a really traditional, beautiful Greek salad. How does that sound? Hmm? Good. Nice. Yeah. Stan says hi and bye. So remember to show us your gorgeous photos. We love seeing all the amazing things that you make, everybody. Um, you guys are getting so talented now. Um, we also have a little bit of news. Dorothy. Come and tell them what we've been making this week. Have you forgotten? <laughs> I'm going to whisper it to her because she's forgotten. Oh yes! Can you tell them? You want me to tell them? Yeah. Dorothy now has a YouTube channel. So everyone who has enjoyed these classes can now go and have a look unfortunately i wasn't able to record some of the early ones so it's only like the last five or six classes i think that i've managed to capture they are now all on the heirlooms and wooden spoons youtube channel and you can look for them under dots classes and go back and see all of the recipes are there everything is there and if you have cousins or friends or siblings who weren't able to make it or you just want to cook along with us again Go ahead and find us, subscribe to the channel, and they are there for everybody for free for always. Um, so please do share and let everybody know who um, wasn't able to come to class. So there are lots of people because of time difference and things, um, and being at school, haven't been able to make them, who really wanted to be there. So we've made them available for everybody forever now. And please subscribe because at the moment we only have one subscriber. It's true. We only have one subscriber. Um, do you know who that subscriber is? Our dad. <laughs> well, actually, now we probably have two subscribers because my brother subscribed. Oh, that's right. we, th we think that maybe Joshua also subscribed. So she maybe now has two subscribers. Anyway, it's not what it's about, but yes, please do go and have a look and feel free to let anybody you know, know that they're there, they're there for everybody, um, for always, and we hope you really enjoy them, and thank you so much for being a part of it and helping us make them. Um, you won't see your lovely faces on there, you will only ever see Dorothy and me, but you might occasionally hear a little voice from above if you ask a question that you might recognise. All right, guys, enjoy, have lovely, lovely meals, lovely to see you. And we'll Bye. see you again next week. And remember, <laughs> next week, no dads. Thank you. I just subscribed to you. Yay! Three subscribers. Yay! <laughs> Annie's going to subscribe right now, too. I love okay. it. So nice. So nice. And they're all there. If there are any that you missed, they're, they're all there. And this one will go up again in a few days. Too. We've got to make one. Mm -hmm. and Chocolate cake, meatballs, meatballs is up there, flatbread is up there. What's it called? The channel is Heirlooms and Wooden Spoons. So if you search for Heirlooms and Wooden Spoons, which is my company, that will take you to the channel. And then in that, all of Doc's videos are there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, lovely people, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Subscribe.